Um, so the first question that I've gotten, I believe, is uh, for Linda. Why does the form of the um, so the swine waste solid liquid impact the carbon accumulation? Why would it be um, incorporated versus surface application to reduce the soil carbon? You want to take that question? Um, yeah, of course. So the swine manure type, so if it's a liquid or solid, it impacts carbon content in soil because the solid uh, has more carbon per unit of weight or per unit volume than the liquid. Um, the liquid is mainly, like, it, there's very little solids and it's the solids that have the carbon incorporated with it. And so that's why there's a difference in the handling. Um, and so a lot of the solid swine studies, those were either, um, you know, a different production system where it's, uh, you know, I don't want to say open lot, but those, those pigs are in a different type of pen or it's been dewatered, which there's a lot of water in um, swine manure. So that's why that had a difference. Um, I don't think that swine manure, you know, the incorporated versus not incorporated, that did not impact carbon content. And the reason for that is that carbon, I mean, unless it runs off, carbon is not really lost to the atmosphere quickly, like, um, it doesn't volatilize like nitrogen would. And so it's not surprising that when you apply it to the surface, as long as it's not running off, it's got nowhere to go. Um, it just hangs out. So that's why that did not have an impact. Um, hopefully that answered your question. I think so. Um, and then the other questions that we have um, is that um, on your soil health um, review, um, is there a specific crops that, that were grown? Um, like, for example, uh, is there cover crops or legumes were used or included in there? Do you know the details? Um, I A few of the studies were, I mean, included soybeans as a legume, you know, corn, soybean rotations or um, something like that. There weren't a lot of legumes grown. And actually none of the studies included cover crops that we saw that were published. And these, the, all the studies were prior to 2021. And so I'm sure, and I know that there's studies out there, but perhaps they just haven't been published um, yet. Good. Um, so I guess maybe there was a follow-up question. I assume that was applied to uh, applicable to Linda's. So your study was not normalized on solid content, but on weight? So we actually did not have enough information for a lot of these studies to normalize any of these, uh, you know, normalize the studies. That's why we ended up going with percent soil organic carbon change and not um, based on the manure input because a lot of the studies just flat out did not have enough information about the con the carbon content or the nitrogen content of the manure, how much manure was actually applied, um, any of that information that we could have done that calculation for them. So that's why we did percent change. Um, it's definitely a hole in a lot of these studies. Again, it's not like those authors did not have that information per se. It's just, it wasn't reported. It's correct. I think even uh, on some of the studies that we have seen, a lot of the uh, manure analysis package, they still don't include the carbon content analysis. So that by default, you're not going to likely to get those anyway. Um, so I guess the next question is um, for everybody, I guess. Uh, it says, are there any condition or data to suggest that the raw manure may have a negative effect on the soil health? So I don't know who wants to take that, but um, I guess maybe to start from Linda and then the other two speakers can chime in also. Um, yeah, so depending, we've seen this in some studies that have been done in the West um, in, you know, semi-arid situations, especially under irrigation, that if you're not careful, you're, especially with raw manure, you could applying at a high enough rate to provide, you know, full nutrient 
needs for crops, you could be over applying um, salts, which lead to salinization and poor soil structure because you can't wash out those salts because there's just limited water. So that is one impact. Um, and I think that there's definitely some things going on with the carbon and nitrogen cycle. Um, with some of these products, you know, if you apply too much manure or too much nitrogen in general, um, if there's just too much nitrogen available, sometimes you depress the, the soil microbes that can cycle those. But I, we haven't seen that per se um, in any of the studies that I'm familiar with. It's the salt issue that, at least in the arid west, is more of a concern. Okay, Anthony, you have anything to add based on your previous studies or current study? Sure. Um, we've we've had a number of um, extensive or lengthy studies in South Dakota with dairy manure and beef feedlot manure, and we saw no negative effects from the manure application, and it was quite quite extensive. Um, every year application. In fact, we saw huge increases in the nutrients, but um, along with that, we caught, we saw good improvements in soil health, fluorine bulk density, increasing water infiltration content um, as the main two. Very good. Manob, you have anything to add? Uh, no, really not. Okay. And then there is a question um, that I have for you. Yeah. Um, did you include uh, well, since we're talking about the soil health variables, um, did you include any type of biological variables measurements? And are you going to have some of those related in your study? Yeah. Uh, so in our university plot, uh, we, are, we have included uh, PLFA analysis uh, from our university plot. Even uh, we, are, we are trying to uh, get some data from uh, Missouri State. So you know that sometimes it's really hard to uh, collect all samples from the state uh, for biological analysis, but we are trying. But from I'm sure that we, we have included uh, this biological study for our research plot experiment. Do you want to tell people what PLFA stands for? Okay, actually, this is one kind of like fatty acid profile, and this is uh, for microorganisms. So, what types of soil microbes are there? We can we can make differentiate, and we can know them. Uh, because you know for right now for soil health uh, not only soil properties so it has uh, like uh, biological uh, soil microbes they have good impact on soil properties um, and also uh, crop yield also uh, so that that will help us to know the uh, microbial diversity in that uh, soil environment great it'll be, it'll be interesting to, to see how the results coming along um, so, Anthony, do you expect the continuous corn operations would be impacting the overall data and the applicability to other fields that have crop rotation based on your experimental design? Do you want to explain that a little bit? Yeah, originally we had proposed a corn soybean rotation. Um, and so corn would have appeared every year and soybeans would have appeared every year in that in that randomized complete block design uh, so we 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 compromised to go with a continuous corn getting that manure application every year um well we always have the our control is the commercial fertilizer uh plot uh to compare against the swine manure we should be able to detect any carbon differences or any soil health influences between those two. So without a true check, um, that, that's how it's going to have to be done. Well, very good. I think we were able to stay on time. Uh, everybody behave. Um, any last word that the, uh, from the uh, speakers? Dr. Chang, there was another question that I managed to mess up. Um, <laughs> it's not there. <laughs> Uh, it was about, uh, I think it was about the presentation I had about the future pro project and could that, could other manures be used in the project? And, and, and the answer is no, we were focusing on swine manure, but there's no reason why the protocols couldn't be applied to other manures as well. So uh, it'd be just a little bit different approach, but, but the same, same protocol could work. 
Very good. Thank you all.